Hey everyone, we're going to take a quick look here at my collection, do a quick overview. It's been a while since I've done one, so I figured, why the hell not? Just going to do a quick run through on everything I have on display here and let you take a look. Starting off on the top shelf here, I have my whole zombie collection. Well, mostly zombies. Back there I do have the Castle Freak figure, which definitely isn't a zombie, but he's kind of close. Then I got Bubba Hotep, also not a zombie, but pretty damn close. We got the real zombies, we got Tar Man, we got Dr. Tongue, we got the plaid zombie from Dawn of the Dead, my custom beach bum zombie there in the back. We got Bubba back there with his display base, we got Big Daddy, Butcher, Tom Savini, Machete Zombie, and Jake from the Mezco Attack of the Living Dead. We also have Earl from the same line. One's missing, but I'll show her off in a second. And they got my two killer clowns up here, looking really, really good. I really wish there were more killer clowns figures, and I gotta get the variants for these guys. And then that dog soldiers figure back there that I absolutely love. Going over to the right, I have my Robocop display. This is really kind of my generic action and video game shelf. So I got Ed 209, I got three incarnations of Robocop. I have the holster version, the battle damage version, and the part three jetpack version. Next to them is Machete. Then I have my Legacy of Kane figures. So I have Raziel, Kane from NECA. And then back there I have the, I think it's BBI Raziel before he gets all screwed up and extra dead. I got a couple 300 figures. I got the Leonidas, which is one that I wanted for a long time. This is one of the, I think an exclusive version. Comes with a bunch of arrows and stuff. Really cool version of the figure. Then I found the Immortal very cheap, so I figured I'd add him into the set. Don't need the other two in this line. Very happy with these two. And back there, I got my Castlevania figures. Once again, both for this and the uh, Legacy of Kane figures. Thanks, Desmond. Well, those and others, actually. And then Illidan from NECA's Hero of the Storm line. I have Nova, but uh, she broke, so I need to get her replaced. And then the two new ones are coming out any day now as I'm filming this. Next row down, I have my Jason Voorhees shelf. So we're going in chronological order. We got Pamela down there. Got part two. Got the two NECA part threes. The two NECA Part 4s, one standing up and one defeated by Tommy. Got my custom Roy, which is meh. Still got the Mezco Part 6, waiting on that new NECA one. Got the little Mezit, back when Mezits used to be more mini mate ish that's the Part 2 version. Then I have the Jason Goes to Hell version. I got Part 7 back there, so I guess if you're going real chronological, we go to Part 7. Part 8 doesn't exist yet. Oh, I gotta make one. I gotta remake one. I made one a long time ago. Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X, Freddy vs. Jason. I actually have the head sculpt here for my part eight, so I just actually have to make the body to it and everything. Or basically do all the other work, but do have a head sculpt ready to go for him. That's also why I have the barrel with the toxic waste. Then we got the remake Jason here. A recent thing I'd done with this shelf was to pull off all of my Mezco duplicates, or my older duplicates, which were mostly Mezco. So I no longer have three part three figures, I just have the two NECA ones. Same with part four, and same with the remake. Just a way to kind of clean up the shelf a little bit. Still kept those figures, but I just wanted to kind of downsize this shelf a bit. And the same goes for the next shelf. Because over here we have Freddy Krueger. Now the plus side is there's really only one figure to get rid of from Mezco with this, which was the part one Freddy. Because I do actually still have two NECA versions. Up here I have the extended arm version. I put them on top of Nancy in the tub. I turn that sideways just because I feel like it's easier to see on the shelf to have it like that. Plus it gives a different look. We have the part two from NECA right there. Then the Mezco part three in the tux, which is cool because it makes it unique. You got the Skeleton Part 3. Actually, a lot of Part 3. You got the Chest of Souls Part 3 back there, and the Syringe Hand Part 3. So, Part 3 being my favorite Nightmare movie, no problem having more figures from that than any of the others. Back there, I got the Part 4 Freddy with the arms exploding out of him, plus the Doctor version. Couple from Part 5, I got the Chef, and then just the generic mutating Freddy with the big foot and everything. You got the babies up there, the pizza, the marionette, the Elm Street house, all that cool accessories, and the manhole cover, because, you know, that's essential. Way in the back there, I've got Debbie turning into a bug. Then we got our Freddy's Dead stuff, so we have the Springwood Slasher and then the Power Glove. Still need to get a damn Freddy vs. Jason Freddy, but then we have New Nightmare. Actually, I guess it's chronologically New Nightmare's first. By the way, Debbie's arms and roach trap down there. Another New Nightmare, Mezit there. The two remake figures, the actual Freddy Krueger and the pre-burned one. And then I have the NECA Ultimate Freddy over here with the furnace, which is freaking awesome. Well, the furnace isn't really that great, but I'm glad I have it. Up here I have my Terminator shelf. So at the end there I have the NECA Kyle Reese. Then we move into the T1 figures. I basically have all the T1 
T-800 figures in here, the two different Tech Noir and the two different leather jacket versions. All along the back there, I do have endoskeletons. I actually have the Playmates T-1, I think it is, back over there in the corner. And then all these NECA endoskeletons hanging out in the back here, leading up to the McFarlane TX. But up here in the front row, we then move into T2. So we have the Pescadero Escape. We have the Man or Machine. We have the Ultimate T1000 replacing my Cyberdyne Showdown, which, as I mentioned in that review, is the only thing it's really good at replacing. Then I have my Final Battle version there with the Battle Across Time and Back. I have the McFarlane Part 3 there with the Coffin taking up a lot of room and falling over all the time. And the NECA Guardian T-800, which I did buy a second of to do a custom with one of my broken endoskeletons, so that'll be coming eventually, hopefully. Then we move into the T-1000 shelf, so we got the Galleria version, we have the Splithead Pescadero version back there. So these two should be replaced by the Ultimate figure, which is pretty exciting. We've got the Liquid Silver SDCC exclusive. We have the Motorcycle Cop back there. We have the Steel Mill version up front, so I'm only really missing the Liquid Nitrogen version of the T-1000. And then we have the version from Terminator Genesis up there. Then yet another miscellaneous horror shelf. We start off with my Texas Chainsaw figure collection. We got the Hitchhiker from Mezco, the NECA Ultimate Leatherface, the other NECA Leatherface, that's the dinner scene. I took my Mezco figure and put him in the old lady mask with the blue apron and the mallet. I figured that kind of worked to keep that figure up here and continue on the Leatherface look. Then we got a part two Leatherface there. Still love that figure from Mezco and the Mezco Shop Top and Nubbins. Also the Mezco Remake Leatherface and the NECA The Beginning Leatherface. Back here I have my custom Cropsy from The Burning. Then I've got my friends to the end. I've got a collection of Chucky figures on the left there is the NECA version of Chucky, the cult classics. Then we have the McFarlane version of Chucky, which I think is not nearly as nice. Then we have the Bride of Chucky 2-pack, which I picked up recently. Unfortunately, Tiffany doesn't have her cigarette, but beyond that, it's got everything. I also love that I have that NECA Good Guy doll box. By the way, we have the NECA Zombie Ghost Face figure. And continue on with the shorter characters, we got Sam from Trick or Treat with his pumpkin. And we move into young Michael Myers from the Evolution of Evil set. Then the classic Michael Myers there. And then the three Rob Zombie versions, I have the escape mask in the background. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 there. And then the first remake version of Michael Myers. The original Judith Myers Tombstone and the remake version of the Judith Myers Tombstone. Going further down, I have kind of my generic horror shelf part two, I guess you could say. And we start over here with Hellraiser. So I have the main four Cenobites, two different versions of Chatter, Pinhead there, Butterball, and Female. I got Skinless Julia there in the back. And I have the Chatter Beast, just because I thought the Chatter Beast was cool. Love Chatterer, so I just wanted to have him. Keeping with the Clive Barker theme and crappy lighting here, we've got Candyman hidden back there. Then we move on, we got Pumpkinhead. we got The Thing, the two different McFarlane Thing figures, actually three different if we count the Head Crab. And then throwing in with the John Carpenter theme, my custom They Live Alien. So I don't know if I really showed this off. It's not great custom, but hey, it works. I like that he has the paper. To me, that makes me happy. Then my collection of Leslie Vernon figures. I have my official release from Decante Collectibles up front, and then my two customs back behind him. The NECA Jigsaw figure pig mask with the stupid freaking Billy puppet that doesn't sit on his tricycle. The McFarlane Norman slash Norma Bates. The NECA carry figure. Then I go over to my Evil Dead shelf. We have the NECA Army of Darkness figure there in the back. Got the McFarlane Evil Ash versus Normal Ash there. Demon Ash, Hero Ash, and my, one of my all-time favorite NECA figures, Henrietta. I um, also have the Farewell to Arms Ash, but I'll show off him in a minute. Plus, I love all the accessories here. We have the Severed Head, we have the Tape Deck, we have the Mini Ash, and we have a few different Necronomicons, which are always fun. Oh, and the hand. Can't forget the hand. The next up is a shelf that's getting very crowded because there's so many cool diorama pieces with it. These are my Universal figures. And a lot of them are from Universal Select. Every so often there's one that's not. But we got the Son of Frankenstein, Frankenstein Monster, next to Igor, which was actually a sideshow piece. Back behind him we have the original Frankenstein's Monster on the table. And then we have the Bride figure back there. And then keeping with the Boris Karloff theme, I have the two mummies, the normal Toys R Us release, and the comic book shop exclusive that's in the sarcophagus. Once again, taking up a ton of room. And then, because we have Frankenstein, I have the Edison Frankenstein right back there from Mezco. Then we have the Boris Karloff once again. A lot of Karloff and Frankenstein tie-ins here. But we have the 
Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde from Abbott and Costello meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I prefer him as a generic mad scientist because I love this setup. Then we move into the Lon Chaney Jr. and Senior Department. We have the Wolfman. We've got the Hunchback back there. And we got the Phantom of the Opera figures plus the Mezco remake figure of the Wolfman. The new Wolfman figure is coming soon, and unfortunately not soon enough for me. I think it comes out right before Christmas. Back there, we have the Vampire Hunter Van Helsing. We have the Dracula, the Redo Creature from the Black Lagoon, and the Invisible Man next to him. And then the Mezco Nosferatu figure, or Count Orlock. Then we move over here to my Pacific Rim figures. So this shelf is all Jaegers. On the left, we have the Romeo Blue, the Tacit Ronin, Horizon Brave, Coyote Tango back there. Then we get to the main movie ones with Cherno Alpha, and a couple different variants of Gypsy Danger. We start with the Anchorage Attack, move into the Hong Kong Brawl. There we've got the Reactor Blast and the Antiverse version. Then we have Crimson Typhoon and Coyote Tango. Still waiting on that redo of him. And then the other shelf is on my Kaiju. So there we have the concept version Axe Head with Trespasser right in front of him. We got the two different versions of Knife Head, the Toys R Us exclusive Clean, and then the regular release Bloody, plus the larger Otachi figure, the baby Otachi. And then speaking of Otachi, the two versions of Mommy here, we have the land version on the ground and the flying version above her spitting out the acid with the little closer to scale baby Otachi down there. We got Leatherback and then we have Scunner. And then moving into the stuff I think most people are probably going to be most interested with. We have my alien shelf. So back there in the back, we have a couple engineers. We have the hologram engineer back there, plus the pressure suit version a little forward of it. With this red lighting, it's like killing any effect of this. We have the trilobite and the engineer back there, the scarred up one. Then we have the normal versions of both of the engineer suits. We have the deacon there with David and the little vats of goo and the severed head and the little wormy creatures down there with them. Then we move on to the first movie. So we got Kane, we got Dallas, we got the big chap back there, and our two Ripleys, and also the Jones figures, and the Alien 3 Xenomorph down here. And the back here we have the Alien Resurrection Alien Xenomorph from McFarlane, and then the two NECA AVPR Xenomorphs. So we got the Pred Alien and the regular Alien. Thanks again, Desmond. And I'm going to have to make some more room on this shelf or add another shelf or something because we got more aliens coming up. And speaking of jam-packed alien shelves, here we have my Aliens dedicated shelves. So we have the Queen. We have Fighting the Power Loader with Ripley in it. It's my custom Ripley. Dirtied her up a bit, bloodied her up a bit more. And we have a good amount of eggs. Still want some more eggs, but there's a pretty good landscape of eggs going on here. We got Bishop lying on the ground in between them. And then we got my hive over here, the few different aliens, basically a couple different regular releases of the Xenomorph. And then we have the bloody explodey versions in back. And then we have my Marines, so a couple different versions of Hicks, a couple different versions of Hudson. We got Windrix up there on the front with the flamethrower. We have the first Ripley I bought back there. And we got Bishop. I did take out the McFarlane Hicks just because I really don't need another Hicks in here to have three, but still do have doubles of Hicks and Hudson. Moving over, I've got my Predator shells over here, and I have a big empty space up there for new stuff. Trying to not keep this shelf too packed. I actually took off a lot of the Predators that aren't in the movies or the comics off the, sh the shelves. So then I have the trophy wall with the Elder out in front of the Elder 2.0. Then I have my Lost Tribe hanging out next to him. The next shelf down, I do have the comic version. So then I have the Ahab Predator, I have the Dark Horse Predator in the back, the Bad Blood, and the Enforcer. Then we move into AVP, which is just going to change up very soon here, but I got the two wolves in the back with Celtic from McFarlane in the front. And then I have my Dead End Tribe, so I have the Albino, the... I don't remember the name of that Predator, the Bumblebee Predator, I don't know. And I have the masked version of the Borg, and then I have the Big Red. And then coming down to the bottom shelf, I really reduced the number of original Jungle Hunter Predators I had. I actually removed all their heads so that I could swap them out if I want to. But we do have the original Jungle Hunter there, or the, I think it's actually the 2.0 Jungle Hunter body. The cloaked version in back. We have the Gort Predator, the SDCC exclusive. We have the Water Emergence back there. And the bloodied up version behind them. And we've got Dutch going on here. So we got all the different versions of Dutch. I didn't really want to get rid of any of the versions of Dutch from my display. I just wanted to keep them all looking cool because I really like that figure. And then we have a couple different versions of the City Hunter. We have the regular mask. And I think I have the unmasked head behind them. Then I have the battle damage in back. 
And then here we have our ultimate predators, Falconer laying down on the job. You got Berserker also with his mast head somewhere around there. And then my stupid tracker predator with the broken off tusk. And then two of the predator hounds. Then over on the side here, even though I took down all the Kenner Predators, I do have the Blade Fighter up here on the wall. And not a figure, but next to it I do have my Piggly No Wiggly poster from Holliston, which is one of my favorite TV shows and one of my favorite jokes from the show. And it's gross, but I love it. Then over here, with the sunlight peeking in, I do have my Mini Mates for Universal Horror. These are all the color ones and my little custom backdrop here. I usually do have the black and white ones on display above it, but I took them down for the time being. They're going to go back up soon couple other art pieces I want to show off. I got the Sam from Trick or Treat over here on the wall that I got the last con I went to. And then from the previous or one of the previous cons this year, I have my three anatomy drawings of alien and predator figures, which I really enjoy. And then the reason you didn't see the Ash or the Helen Attack of the Living Dead figure up on the shelf is because I have them down here doing a photo shoot. So I've got some Necronomicon pages in the background. I was just trying to take some photos with them because I figured she kind of looks like a deadite. And then moving over here to the Detolfs in my office, I have all my kaiju crap, which I need to organize a little bit better. But up here in front, I have the Pacific Rim SCCC exclusive little kaiju figures and Jaeger figures. I have my theater exclusive Godzilla from GMK. Uh, I did keep a couple boxes, which is weird for me, but I have the Gigan Revel Tech box, which I bought off somebody that actually has Ken Satsuma's autograph on it. He played the Godzilla in the 90s, but he also played Gigan before he got that gig. So I thought it was kind of cool to have that box on display. And then I also do have the video game version of Godzilla's box on display just because I thought it was cool looking. Though that could very easily get thrown out in the near future. I got some minifigures in here from what I posted recently. I've got the Gauss and the Translucent Gamma over there. I also have my Micro Man Godzilla 54 in there. Then on the other Detolf, I have a couple Treadmasters figures. I have the Godzilla, the Supercharged Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla, the Mothra. I've got the Treadmasters Godzilla 98 in the background. I have a little Godzilla head playset. Then some more minifigures. I have the Brown Gargantua, the Frankenstein Monster Hand, Manda, and Gorosaurus. And the Detolfs I did kind of give some Christmas lighting to here just because I could. Because I have the color changing dioder lights in there. But starting over here from the top left side. We've got my kind of mech hanger over here. So a bunch of different robot characters from the Godzilla series. I have the Super Mecha Godzilla 2 complete with Garuda. I have my Mogira, the Mecha King Ghidorah, and then the two versions of the Kiro Mecha Godzilla. Next shelf down I have Biolante, still probably one of my favorite SH Monster Arts figures. I absolutely love her. I've got her with the Super X2 flying there next to her. And I kind of like this is just a very simple shelf. Just one giant figure and a little figure with her and it just kind of works for me. Down here we've got my Godzilla shelf. So starting from the left, we have the NECA Godzilla 54, the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 64, still need to get the Emergence version, the NECA Godzilla 85, got Baby Godzilla down there. Then we actually have the Rebirth Godzilla, but he's standing in for my Godzilla 94. The Millennium Godzilla, not the repaint. I have no desire to get the repaint. Then the two versions of the 2014 from Monster Arts. I actually have the Spitfire there in the back, but I gave his accessory to the original release. So he's holding on to the Mudo head. Then down here on the bottom, I have kind of my miscellaneous Kaiju shelf. Got Anguirus there from Revel Tech. Behind him, I have the T-Rex Revel Tech did. Got the Monster Arts Kong there in the back with the Revel Tech Daimajin. The Revel Tech Rodan, the Monster Arts Gamera, another fantastic figure, the Ultra Act Ultraman, a Trend Masters Godzilla 98 that actually kind of fits in scale with the rest of these, even though he's not very articulated, and the Revel Tech Baragon. And then back there is that Revel Tech Dragon. I keep meaning to make him into a Manda custom, but I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. So he's just on display here as a random dragon. Going to the other side, which is currently the red side of my Detolfs. I have my Alien Invader set. So we have Space Godzilla there on the left, King Ghidorah there on the middle, which this version isn't a Space Invader, but damn it, he's a Space Invader in my head. Two different versions of Gigan, the Final Wars and the Revel Tech original version. And then back there's the Chugokin Mecha Godzilla figure, which is also an Alien Invader just by being a mech. And we have the three little Dorats chilling up front. Then I've got a whole cabinet full of flying things. So I have Fire Rodan up there at top, then Mothra, then Batra and their two larval forms, along with some fighter jets on display. And down here is one of my favorite little cubicles here, right up there with the Biolante cube. This is my Godzilla versus Destroya shelf. 
So it is completely from that film. We have the burning Godzilla up here being attacked by the crab form, the larval form. We've got full on destroy in all his glory back there. We have the flying form of destroy along with the Super X3. Godzilla Jr. along with the aggregate form on the floor. We've got the helicopter back there that was following Godzilla Jr. And then really hard to see, unfortunately, but. I do have the Comic-Con explosion version there, representing a Meltdown Godzilla. And then I took my original 94 Godzilla, put him back there to kind of represent the Rebirth version of Junior. So if this had a little more depth to play with, I could probably make it look a lot better. But I really love how this shelf came out. And then on a complete divergence from what everything else on these shelves represent, I have my Dragon Ball Z figure art shelf. Eventually I want to get another Detolf and just do these figures in that Detolf on their own. But for the time being, it's just kind of cram-packed. So I got Android 16 there in the back. Then I got Cell, I got Krillin, Adult Gohan, and Teen Gohan, Piccolo. In the middle, I've got a strip of Goku. So I have my really super crappy bootleg version of Super Saiyan 3 Goku, which eventually I'll have to replace with a Datong or something. So I'm just not going to pay the prices for the real one. Then we have the normal Super Saiyan, my custom Super Saiyan God Goku, which might be obsolete soon enough because it looks like they are making one that actually uses a skinnier body, which is cool. Then the normal release Goku. Got Broly hanging out back there in the corner. And then a couple non figure arts figures back there. I have a Boo, actually, two different versions of Boo from Irwin. The Super Boo is pretty much non articulated. He actually has a gummy rubber body, which is kind of interesting. I think I could do something cool with that at the photo or something, but just haven't had a chance to make it work. And then the Evil Boo is actually really well articulated. Not quite as good as a figure arts figure, but he works for fitting in with these characters. Got the figure arts Vegito, the figure arts Frieza. Then over there I have the Bandai Hybrid Action Gotenks, which is actually a pretty good figure. He fits in decently with the rest of these. His articulation's really weird. I do need to review him at some point because he's worth talking about. And then up there I have a Datong Vegeta, which is pretty decent for being a Chinese knockoff. In the other room I have my one sixth figure. So in this Detolf I have T2 shelf up here at the top, which is the Battle Damage T800, the Liquid Metal T1000, and the Sarah Connor with the signed Linda Hamilton placard back there, which is kind of cool. Then on his lonesome down here, I have the T1 T800. I thought about moving one of the other figures from the other Terminator shelf down with him, but it just didn't look right. Then I have a Sleeping Corgi, which isn't really part of any of this, but he's there, so might as well include him. I have my classic horror Detolf shelf, so I have the Christopher Lee Dracula, the Boris Karloff Frankenstein, the Bela Lugosi from The Wolfman, which I only got because he was dirt cheap at my comic shop, and The Wolfman Lon Chaney Jr. And in this dark, depressing shelf down here, I have my Freddy, Jason, and Michael Myers figures, so as hard as it is to see, in the back on the left side, I start with the Mezco Part 7 Jason, and in the sideshow, Jason Goes to Hell, and then up front, my custom Part 4 Jason. On the right-hand side and back, we have my custom Freddy vs. Jason Freddy, which is signed by Robert Englund. We have the Sideshow Part 3, and then my custom Michael Myers figure. <laughs> than an angry awake corgi. Not figures, but I figure I'd show off my autograph wall. I've got Tony Todd, Ari Lehman, Ted White, Kane Hodder, Ken Kersinger, Derek Mears, Tom Savini, Daniel Harris, Gunnar Hansen, Bill Mosley, Danny Trejo, Brad Dourif, Doug Bradley, George A. Romero, Akira Takarada, Haruo Nakajima, Doug Jones, Robert Kurtzman, Ernie Hudson, Enrico Browning, Veronica Cartwright, Tom Skerritt, Lance Henriksen, Michael Bean, and Lloyd Kaufman. Up here I got a couple masks. I got a ghost face mask and my Trick or Treat Studios Halloween 2 mask. Also my custom baby face mighty mug in between them. Then over here what I call my Creature from the Black Lagoon shrine. I have another signed picture from Rico Browning. Which I really just got because I wanted to get a picture with the guy. And then I have the Creature Bust Bank, the Mezco version, and then this Skeleton Claw I picked up at Dragon Con. Then over here we have what I refer to as my big... I've got my Fiberglass Mask Part 6 mask, my NECA Freddy vs. Jason mask, my custom baby face mask from the Hills Run Red, which came from my aunt and uncle, which is freaking amazing. My NECA Part 4, I actually have a hook up here where my Part 3 JDF Studios mask is supposed to go, but it's actually getting painted right now, getting a clear coat on it. And I got crappy machete back there, which is really just garbage. And then my NECA Freddy gloves. I got the remake on the left, the original in the middle, and the part three on the right. 
couple last things in my room. I've got my NECA Eddie figures up here at the top. Actually, the one on the left is my custom Different Worlds version. And then I have Killers, Live After Death, Final Frontier, and then the retro style Trooper, Peace of Mind, and Power Slave. I actually do have the Two Minutes to Midnight version. I just haven't had a chance to get him up on the shelf because I want to review him first. And then last but not least, I have my larger scale Godzilla figure. So here I've got my X Plus. So a Gorosaurus, Mothra, Godzilla, Minya, and Varan. This is eventually going to get built out to as many as I can get from Destroy All Monsters. There's quite a few coming next year, like the Rodan and the Anguirus that will be joining this collection. And then down here we have my M1 Godzilla Skeleton Kit, which I've heard is a bootleg, but I absolutely love it. It looks beautiful. And then the NECA Godzilla 2014 12-inch tall figure, which I got for 15 bucks on Black Friday, so I wasn't saying no. Hey.